Mystery Triathlon match, Gene Genie versus Dr. Mutagen. Elimination rounds continue. We're going to be playing the Parrot Pack from Time Stalker. I like the way it looks, yes. Okay. We've got Panic Restaurant. I love this game. We got Super Carrot. And Tiny Toon Adventures. Buster. Hidden Treasure, actually. I had myself there thinking that was Bust Loose. Play two stages, Panic Restaurant. Super Carrot. Stage. 1-1 one, one clear. And from the start, clear stage 2-2 two, two on Buster. I need to decide on how I want to present my games list here. <laughs> um, yeah, that looks correct. Something like that. I think our players are almost ready. I'm gonna give them the go ahead. I was just posting a message about the arcade pit plans. If you are ready, click Sonic's big noggin. Players, Dr. Peterson versus Gene Genie. After this match, I'll be taking a little break and then launching another stream with Secret of Evermore, hopefully able to finish that tonight not that i'm not enjoying it i sort of am sort of i'm not <laughs> but uh, i think i am at the end and i think that journey is at its uh, limit on terms of it's still welcome i think we will say that it isn't if it goes for another two streams i think that game is longer than it should be probably and it's because the labyrinthian design has extended the game beyond its limits the players have marked themselves ready here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, begin. 
I am familiar with Panic Restaurant. I'm not really familiar with the others. This game is... I like it. Some people don't. I don't know. It's cool. It's interesting. He fights Chef Waluigi with Chef Mario's grandpa. Um... You just, you're beating up turkeys and carrots, as you can see. You, you, it's a lot of this. Your attack is um, a little loud. It's, it's just a platformer. It's interesting. It's got a lot of charm for an NES game. I don't know where it came from, though. I'm not really sure about that. You have some various weapons. And there's some mini-games that are interesting. Known in Japan as Wontaku Koku no Gourmet World. 1992? I guess it was officially released. I didn't know that. I don't... That's interesting. I've never seen this game in the wild, ever. Putting that popcorn machine? GG is taking an early lead here. Dr. Mutagen is stuck playing this bonus game. I don't know that they meant to. <laughs> Maybe they grabbed too many coins. That's a mistake. I don't know how Gene Genie saved so much time uh, over Dr. Mutagen here. Did uh, did they start earlier or what? I, I just look over and I see Gene Genie like half a stage ahead. I'm not sure how that happened, but it was accomplished, it looks like. Nice elevator. Nice skeleton elevator. This game is very creepy for some reason. I don't know. I think that's why I like it. I like any game with a good pizza. Oof. Explosion apples. <laughs> what is this place? The electricity coming out of the chandelier caught me off guard. It, that's finally the thing that broke me here. Everything else is fine. Looks like Mutagen has caught up somehow. Somehow. Oh, we got the pot. Watch out. 
Ain't nothing beats the pot. Oh, damn, the fork? Powerful. Oh, I hate to see it. Here comes the spoon again. Very close race now. <laughs> I remember this boss. It is the oven with the chickens in it boss. GG taking the lead just by a little bit. These two players are, we're talking like quarter finalists of the Mr. Triathlon lower tier. The winner here will be fighting Okami Games, and that person will then, whoever wins that will then fight Poltergeist, and that is the final opponent for Andy, whoever wins that match. So we're four matches out here at this point from the final battle. How close we are to the Mr. Triathlon, which moves very slowly these days with our one game we can schedule a week. <laughs> got a little uh, out of sync with the schedule. It happens when you got this many people playing. I don't recognize this game at all. Is this some. I mean, it just looks like a Mario 2 hack of some kind. Oh! Both players are in the same area at this point. I didn't know there were any Mario 2 hacks until I saw Arthur Blues playing one this last year. This looks uh, painful. This um, this game is not Ninja and I would want to to play on, I don't think. I feel like I, I don't like this game. <laughs> but what do I know? Maybe it's alright. I don't know. I have a really hard time with this game, I guess. It's my thing. On the way, I mean, just the way it normally is, I have a really hard time. So I can't imagine some Kaizo hack of it. Which this certainly looks like if this is level 1-1. One, one. I think I think I overused the word Kaizo, but it's definitely harder than the original game is at this point, at least. Wow. That is one hell of a guardian for that. Players are having a bad time. Stage 1-1. One, one. That's all they need to clear, though. I mean, is that good enough? That's not... Oh, wow. Okay, it is good enough, but you're gonna take a hit, almost certainly. Mutagen is through. Some kind of shortcut to do uh, Birdo? Birdo 2? Who the hell Birdo? Who's, who's gonna be? What is behind the door here? Sprites destroyed Birdo. Just Birdo with teeth. Mutagen playing it very careful, making sure they get that kill. They are going through the snake mouth now, and <laughs> that's it. Tiny Toon Adventures Buster's Hidden Treasure begins. Now, this is an official release that I have not seen, just because there are, I guess, three, four Tiny Toon Adventure games that I... I only had one on the NES, and it wasn't... It wasn't unpolished, but it sure was mean. So this is a... Three years into the SNES release here, I've not seen this one. It looks like a... I mean, is it even a SNES game? I'm looking this up. It doesn't look like... It looks like Genesis.
It is. That's one of the reasons why I've never seen it for sure. Okay, so his mission is to defeat Montana Max and rescue Babs Bunny. What a shocker. Maybe I have seen this on a speedrun uh, at AGDQ or something. I, I feel like I've seen that premise before. But not, um, that's what you do in the other one on the NES too, but like, that's different from that. <laughs> can trip over a can into quicksand. <laughs> G Genie has got to know that they're having very little time to deal with this here. They, they are just having a really bad time with Super Carrot. Dr. Mutagen is making short work out of this pack, though. They're gonna have a little bit of time to spend on this game, but um, it's gonna be an easier run than the rest. The original NES game of Tiny Toons is... It's a mascot platformer. It's got a lot of flair to it, but the sprites are so big that they accidentally made it very hard. Just naturally, because it's so hard to dodge in a game like that. They didn't give you enough health to dodge either, like you get one hit if you're lucky. <laughs> it's usually, usually you're dead in, in two hits and you might get an HP up if you look hard enough. You might have a buddy to help you a little bit here and there, but if you pick the wrong one, it won't be very helpful for you anyway. Like, you can pick the cat, and the cat might be good for climbing walls, but there might not be any walls. You don't really know until you get to the stage. Found the dodo. Is that good? cartoon the dodo came from is unless there's one before it it's it's porky pig trying to get famous for catching the only one somewhere in the depths of the jungle and it's just he's super annoying and a very cartoonish he hits you with all the old cartoon methods of being obnoxious and porky pig eventually captures him and leaves but there are 10 million more of them in fact and they just you, know, you just don't know about those ones i guess oh <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of this character Gene Genie's finally there. Proto with teeth has been spotted again. They are one world of Tiny Toon Adventures behind. And we have the Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog trap here. Sort of. <laughs> Ooh. When I was a kid, no one else in my class watched these. Uh, so it's always jarring to me how popular it must actually have been. Maybe my class is just full of idiots who didn't appreciate these good cartoons. <laughs> uh, it must be popular, that's got like six games.
I don't know where I lost it at, but I had a shirt that, um... It was like a treasure chest with Bugs Bunny on front of it. And uh, if you uh, lifted up the flap that was actually the treasure chest lid, uh, it would pop out and um, some character from some cartoon was going to kill him with a sword. And that was the best shirt of all time. A pop-up book shirt. <laughs> I wonder if I can find that thing. I'll never find it. I've never seen anything like it ever again in my whole life. <laughs> I can't believe clothing that was made out of duct tape took off and not pop up clothing with foldable flaps that have art behind them. Genie is making much better pace in this game. It's hard to tell where the players are in terms of distance. I suppose the Dodo serves as a, a portal opening wizard in this game. Are they both on 1-4? Is that where they're at? This boss is very aggressive. Tissy Devil. Is that red star indicating that that's World 1? Is that what we're doing? I suppose that's what we're doing. Gene Genie is now on the stage that was just cleared by Dr. Mutagen. Really not a whole lot between them, considering the incredible start that Mutagen had on this particular game. GGD seems to be making much better pace at Tiny Toons, but nowhere near enough to catch up instantly on um, Super Carrots. Really broke them. <laughs> really took a lot of time to clear that. If I were Mutagen, I'd probably feel pretty safe after crushing uh, Super Carrot that easily. In fact, I would, um, I would be a little concerned that both players would have done it. If I got through a game that seemed like it might be hard, but made it in a couple minutes. Um, I don't know if they just got lucky on the path, maybe they played it before. They did find a shortcut that went straight to Birdo. Birdo, herself, even with teeth, looked pretty similar to the old Birdo, so if you played Mario 2 before, I don't think you'll have trouble with that.
some logs fall, some don't. <laughs> you can tell which ones are which by uh, the way they move, or if they don't move at all, I guess. Both players are now on the same stage. I think this is the end of our run here. Mutagen has it, I believe. In a time of 2045, we are calling it for Mutagen. Gene was not able to make up for the multiple game overs, I think, in Super Care. Just that's a lot of time that Dr. Mutagen did not lose. That game was definitely the deal breaker. They were almost exactly in sync on Panic Restaurant. And I would say that Gene Genie is moving faster just in general on this game here, but not fast enough. That was so much time lost in Super Care. spend a lot of time climbing ropes in this game. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like a pretty normal Genesis platformer, I would say. Just, uh, a game like this, I, um... I'd play it once through and I'd be done with it, probably, if I if I had the patience to finish it. I get... I mean, I'd mostly be looking for characters I recognize, I guess, because I'm not too impressed by any of it, but it's, it's not too bad. Gameplay-wise, it looks fine. It all looks normal. <laughs> I like the tree art, uh, but we're we're already using it again, as you can see on both screens. It's the same exact art, um, just with a little color change in the back. It's so, like, video gamey, if that makes any sense. The kind of traps it has are like... Why, why are these here? They don't make any thematic sense, really. There's just spikes in trees with spinning logs, falling platforms. Some spikes are animated, I don't... <laughs> are there alternate exits? I don't feel like that's the same one that Dr. Butigen took. But in any case, 2310, losing by about a minute and a half, Gene Genie is done. It looks like it's an alternate path, just straight up like Mario World style alternate exit. Gene Genie is heading north, and um, Mutagen is heading east. That's interesting. In any case, Dr. Mutagen will be moving on to play Okamio games in the semi-finals for the lower bracket. Who will then fight the finalist Poltergeist, who has been waiting for a while now to play against the champion of the lower bracket. And whoever wins that match will go on to play Andy, who they will have to beat twice. <laughs> Andy is undefeated, which means they will need to be beaten twice in the top bracket. Uh, in a row, Andy is going to be one hell of an opponent, and to beat them twice, that's going to be a tall order. But that's what we're going with. That's the way the tournament is set, so... We either have two or three matches left. And like I said, I'm going to be back in uh, 15 minutes probably with Secret of Evermore. Maybe the last run of that game. I'm going to try and finish it tonight. Uh, if it's a five hour commitment, that's fine. If it's more than that, maybe I won't finish it, but we'll see. I think I can do it. I'm 
feeling very strong in Secret of Evermore in terms of items that I have in my bag. Like, I seem to have all the artifacts for the most part, and I seem to have a lot of equipments, though I think that will expire soon. I seem to have a lot of armor. I don't know. I'm probably missing a bunch of spells, but, you know, it is. It's fine. Yo, Romo, thank you for the sub. I did pose an arcade pit question in the arcade pit chat. If you have a suggestion, you can feel free to throw it in there. We're going to deal with that tomorrow. I just, uh, I just want to rename a game, and I'm working on a couple other edits. Just refining my show a little bit before we do twice a week. Thank you for the sub. Well, I'll be all right back in terms of... I'll be back in 15 minutes, so I'm going to close stream. I'll see you later.